Hi, this is Glenn McDonald, and I'm, uh, I'm speaking to you from the town of Mammoth Lakes, California, in the eastern Sierra Nevada. On this, uh, the first one of the Muir reports that we're going to try to do, we're going to talk about the drought here in the eastern Sierra, how the drought's affecting some of the local environment here, some of the evidence of the drought, but also how the drought is affecting the towns and cities here on the eastern Sierra, and also the implications of this drought for California, and we can really, for California, particularly for Los Angeles, and we can really see some evidence of that when we go up the road here towards Mona Lake. So let's have a look around the Eastern Sierra, beautiful part of the world, but a part of the world that is really being hit hard by the drought of 2015. Small patches of dirty snow are all that remain on many of the mountains rapidly melting as we move into the summer. As you can see from the mountains here above June Lake, there's very little snow left in the Sierras, even though it is still June. This last winter wasn't the lowest winter in the last 100 or so years of recorded snowfall, but it is one of the lowest winters. And it comes on the heels of a three year period of low snowfall and low precipitation. So the problems of lack of snow, lack of water, have been compounding. After several years of drought, Reservoirs here in the eastern slope of the Sierra, just like those on the west side of the Sierra, are down considerably, not holding nearly as much water as they normally would. Remember, we've just come off the end of the snowmelt season. These reservoirs should be at their fullest level. The one behind me here in the June Lake Loop hardly has any water in it whatsoever. The water that comes out of this reservoir will be part of the water supply for the city of Los Angeles. As you can see, we really have an issue here. Behind me is Mono Lake and Islands, which are important for breeding bird habitat. Where I'm standing today, in 1913, would have been underwater. This would have been the bottom of the lake. 1913, the Los Angeles Aqueduct was opened by William Mulholland, served the city of Los Angeles, and it began to draw off the fresh water from the Sierra Nevadas down through the Owens River system to the Los Angeles Aqueduct and to the city of Los Angeles. As that water was drawn off, it choked off the water supplies from Mona Lake. And year by year, bit by bit, the level of the lake fell to near where it is today. Exposing, for example, the unbelievable tufa mounds, which we're going to have a look at in a minute. <laughs> Under the current drought, because of the low snowpack in the Sierra and the very high temperatures, evaporation is high, the supply of water is low to Mona Lake. The lake's fault level is falling very close to a point where some of the islands, which are protected breeding bird habitat, would become connected to the mainland, allowing predators to enter the islands. That would not be allowed, and therefore, it's very likely that transference of water from the eastern Sierras to the city of Los Angeles will be reduced in order to maintain the level of Mono Lake and to keep protection for the island habitat out here. This, in a sense, could be a ground zero for Los Angeles' water issues as we move through this drought. Fire is a natural part of the eastern Sierra uh, ecology and, and particularly at these lower elevation forests. And you can see evidence of a very recent and, and large fire behind me here. This is the Swall Meadows Paradise Fire. What's uh, unusual about this fire is it didn't burn in the summer. This fire burnt in February of this year, February 2015. 
and was essentially out of control for several days, despite the fact it had burned in the middle of the winter. What we're seeing here in the low elevations of the Eastern Sierra is something like what we're seeing in the shrublands, grasslands, and low elevation forests of Southern California. The forest fire, the wildland fires, are no longer a summer phenomenon. They are a year-round phenomenon. This was a February fire. And not only did it impact the vegetation and natural ecosystems here, but it exerted a considerable human cost. We are entering the community of Swall Meadows. It's a fire safe community where measures are taken to protect the homes and, and structures against the eventuality of a wildfire. Swall Meadows was directly in the path of the February 2015 fire. During the course of the fire, some 200 people had to be evacuated from the communities of Paradise and Swall Meadows. When the fire had finished coming through the communities, some 40 homes were destroyed. At present, materials being cleared, fuel is additional fuel is being removed, but none of that will help the people who own those 40 homes here. Fortunately, there were no fatalities. Evacuation was successful. But bear in mind, this community is very close to infrastructure of Bishop, major highways, a populated state, California, which has a long history of firefighting. Despite all of that, a fire in February caused the evacuation of 200 people and destroyed some 40 homes out here in Swall Meadows.